he took 300,000 from the party coffers without anybody knowing. And we said, ah, okay. And then six million, as we speak right now, is missing. Um, there is no way uh, an account, an MDC account, can be withdrawn by one person. It stands to reason. <laughs> program we discuss anything political, social, economic and anything that should concern you. This is a platform, an alternative voice for every Zimbabwe where we allow Zimbabweans to talk to each other and not through each other. Now over the past week there has been hot debate over the MDC team political situation within their own political party the voting on constitutional amendment number two where 26 amendments have sailed through 26 amendments on the constitution have sailed through uh, the house of assembly and are now being taken through to senate people are now questioning the mdct as an opposition political party in the country so to clear the air or to explain all these issues for us, we have in studio the MDCT spokesperson, Witness Dure, who will be joining me right here on this, the situation right now. Now, welcome, Witness, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, blessed, and uh, greeting, uh, greetings to the viewers. Now, Witness, let us just cut to the chase. There appears to be turmoil in your MDCT where the messaging is not fully coordinated. You are the chief spin doctor of the MDCT. Tell us what is really happening in your party. Well, I think you have to be more specific when you say there is turmoil and uh, I am the chief uh, spin doctor. Uh, you have to give me specifics on what you are referring to. Uh, I cannot just uh, answer into a vacuum. But you, would, you know um, the issues that are around the, your political party and you had to call a press conference just a few weeks ago. So, so definitely you do know these things. People want to understand. Well, if you, are, if you want to refer to issues that we called a uh, presser on, the very last uh, press conference that we held uh, on Thursday last week. It was basically to clear the air <coughs> or rather to give more information about uh, the passage of constitutional amendment number two bill in the lower house uh, of, of, of parliament. Uh, in that press, basically what we were doing, we were 
giving our side of the story as to how the situation panned out in the lower house as it did and uh, uh, maybe I may favor you with a rehash of the same because this is a press that was widely published and uh, articles were written about it in, in, in mainstream and social media but basically what we were saying in that press as a party is that uh, the clauses that passed uh, in the lower house can be summed up into six thematic areas uh, where we had uh, mainly the, <coughs> the clause to do with the running mat the running mat clause which was passed in, in 2018 in 2013 but uh, 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 held in abeyance for, for 10 years we also had a, a clause to do with uh, a devolution uh, to say <coughs> it was not uh, proper to have uh, members of parliament uh, who sit in the national assembly to also sit in provincial affairs because it will compromise their duty as as as, as of giving oversight to to, to lower structures of of, of government uh, the devolved government we also had the 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 issue to deal with uh, 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 the well it was it was basically those six so from those six that we had as the party as the mdc we were opposed to the to the constitutional amendment as ref, as, as affecting the running mate clause but our members of parliament were conflicted because on one hand they had to reject that clause but on the other hand the the continuation of the human quota that was also there the introduction of the youth quota that was also there uh, the devolution clause that i have referred to uh, all those uh, left them with a dilemma so in the end our members of parliament voted uh, with their conscience and as we saw what then ensued was uh, a, a bit of a uh, discussion around what our vice president uh, Dr. Kupe felt should have happened as the leader in the in the in the house, maybe together with the, the secretary general, who is the chief whip, because they voted on one side. They voted against the amendments, but some of our members voted for for for, for that uh, uh, amendment. So basically, it was to clear the air to say we understand the 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 position, the awkward position, the conflicted position that our members of parliament. Uh, way in and uh, we understand that they voted with their conscience uh, we are still unpacking this uh, uh, situation and uh, the bill is going to go through to senate where it is going to be given due attention by our senators and uh, we may the, the public may want to know that uh, you know our president uh, Douglas Monzora is a senator so he's going to be leading debate again shedding more light on why we are opposed to the two clauses that we are opposed to and how we want the final bill to come so that uh, we can reconcile it to our long-held party positions. Mm -hmm. Do you think that democracy was saved? Well, it depends on, on what you want, how you want to define democracy on the day because the issue is members of parliament engaged and the due process took place and issues were tabled and uh, one of the issues that uh, the public may want to know is that over and above voting on party lines members of parliament are also duty bound to vote on their conscience it's also allowed in democracies it happens everywhere uh, sometimes you find that uh, you, you the, question the, is, the question is do you think democracy was saved in amending that constitution because you, you want to paint a balance that you had to do a trade-off. Now, in you doing a trade-off, do you think the democracy was safe? I did not say that we gave a trade-off. You said you I just painted I when, just when, painted that there was a dilemma and our, our MPs were conflicted. At no time did the party come with a position to make a, 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 a formal or agreed trade-off. But was, you did make a trade-off because you are saying in you are unwittingly saying you did make a trade-off because you say you wanted to push for the women empowerment and therefore you felt that rejecting it totally would mean that you also reject the women empowerment so you made an unconscious or unwitting trade-off by accepting the other issues 
for the benefit. But how will that be a trade off when our leader in the lower house, Dr. Kupe, voted against that but you benefit? Have justified the reason why you voted for it. She, she voted against it. Our chief whip was voted against it. But this is the story that is not being told. Mm -hmm. That our leader of the opposition voted against that bill, uh, chiefly for the two clauses that I have articulated. But this is a woman. What, what does it matter? We, we, you we, said you are advancing, you, you, your, your party is advancing for, for women empowerment. Yes. And, and she voted against that. So this is why I was asking you. You know what? Are you sending the same message in, the, in your political party? Our, our political party has long held positions on all the six issues that came up in that bill. With and I was just. Amendments. Pardon? 26 amendments. There were 26, but you can uh, really uh, narrow them down to six key thematic areas. Um, uh, key, six key thematic areas, like I've, I've articulated. Unless if you want to, to you know, argue or, or, uh, or against that kind of categorization. But we, we felt as a party. You could just narrow them down to those six, and uh, four saying, of I'm them. Your party, your party position says that women, uh, you are empowering women, and women in your party, who is your deputy president, was busy voting against it, and you are justifying it to say that you are supporting the empowerment of women. I find that totally conflicting. Thank you for noting that. This is exactly what I was saying that our MPs found ourselves in a very, very conflicted position. While on one end, they wanted to advance the, the women quota, the youth quota, the devolution clause. On the other hand, there was the issue of the running mate, which the, the Zimbabwean population spoke overwhelmingly for. Uh, was it's not just the running mate witness. Let us be, let us be, uh, let us be fair. There's the, there's the issue of increasing the number of parliamentarians from the president can appoint five out of parliament. Now you voted for him to appoint seven. That's increasing. You've got the issue of putting power, executive power, into one person where parliament right now has been, its power to scrutinize any government deal even entered by uh, government, private persons, has been taken away. Well that, that constitutional amendment. well, that was not our reading of, uh, of, 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 of the amendment what was in, your in terms of your. Amendment? No, specifically in terms of the, the, the government. Uh, it was because the, the amendment came to specify uh, what is called, what, what should be defined as a, a contract which can then make the nation to be held uh, in debt. It was an extension of the, the, the 20. 18 uh, provisions, except that it gave more clarity as to, because in, it, it was opaque from the 2013 provision, the, the, the clause was opaque. It couldn't separate from international organizations, from international government agencies and, and, and other but, such like. So, it, so, it, so, it, so this clause, so this, but the clause gave a, 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 a clarification that we needed so that uh, the parliament may know how much to, to consider uh, when, 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 when such kind of deals are made. Your MPs were conflicted on that. I on, on removing transparency, they felt that they could push to keep 60 seats for women parliamentarians. And but I just told you. their power to but hold I, their But I just power. told you that amendment sought to give clarity as to what can be categorized as an international agreement. So there was no conflict there because that clarity is important. So you need a constitutional amendment to have that clarity. It, it was there in the constitution and it was opaque. It was open to all kinds of interpretations. And Can you just explain for me so that I have clarity as well because I'm losing you there? Because uh, you see the, the, the 2013 clause, uh, it just uh, it left it vaguely. You could have deals with the other you know, para-government organizations. You could have uh, agreements with government organizations being categorized in the same manner. So there are agreements that are done bilaterally between governments, and there are agreements that are done with uh, other international organizations like the World Bank, you know, and other institutions. So we needed clarity on which agreements uh, can would parliament scrutinize and not scrutinize. Not, not, not necessarily to scrutinize, because, but because which ones can then. Uh, uh, 
accum uh, accumulate debt on, on, on the nation. Because, say for instance, the government today decides to make an agreement with a, a country, a certain country, and the leadership or administration changes. Uh, that clarity then gives direction as to whether the new administration can choose to follow the same direction that was taken by the administration, the previous administration. This does, it, does it make sense to you what you're saying right now? Because I, it doesn't make sense to me. If, in, any agreement done by a government does not lapse when but, that government falls. But that is exactly the clarity that was brought by that amendment. Oh, to what say, did it say? Maybe, maybe let's, let's just explain to our, well, to our viewers. Well, you, sh you, should, you, you, you would have told me if you wanted spe the specific... Uh, a wedding of it so that we can argue on the on the semantics around it but the net import of the of the of the provisions is to say that we need a clarity on what international ag agreements uh, constitute a national debt or add to the national debt in perpetuity and which ones the the, the nation can uh, decide that they were not made in the interest of the country therefore should not accrue to 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 to, to national debt uh, these are things that then even everyone who deals with the nation will be clear about before engaging in those kind of agreements to say this kind of an agreement will not hold the future administrations. Uh, uh, is, there, is there anything like that in business law, in many law, is there anything like that? Well, you are arguing with me on legal matters. I'm not a legal fundi. I'm not going to pretend to be one. But if I'm going to stick to the issues that you raised, which are in the bill, this was the net uh, explanation that uh, we felt it was the it was was the amendment so about. In your explanation, if I'm getting you right, is that if the present government of today gets into a into a debt agreement with another nation or another institution, there is room for the next government to disown that debt and say we're not paying it back. I think. Bless it. I think saying? for. I think for you to be able to narrow me down to exactly what you want me to say. No, I you, want you to, to be clear. Is I it cannot, what you are saying or not? No, bless it. Let's, let's, let's stay at a bird's eye view of this thing because these, are legal, these things have got legal implications. I will not start to give parallels because I'm not a legal person. I don't have a legal mind, a legal eye to then explain exactly. Okay, let's, let's leave this yes. problematic one and let's go on the issue of increasing the number of parliamentarians. Because the president now can increase the number of parliamentarians from the five that you used to have to seven. Yes, that's an increase by two. Yes. You're okay with it? Yeah, because this is a... a in, in order to get the kind of requisite uh, skills that he may think he, he, he needs when, when they are appointing uh, ministers. If, the way you put it, it's as if the president can just increase members of parliament. But this is tied to the fact that when government appointments are made, ministerial appointments are made, sometimes there are skills which may not necessarily be found in the people that have come through first past the post or any other such uh, you know, uh, channels of coming through to, to parliament. So, the increase by two was necessarily to to afford uh, the president that uh, leeway, that leverage to actually get more competent people people into the cabinet. And we felt as a party, this has always been the position of of saying we want more competent uh, ministers than anything. I want us to then also look at the the aspect. You're okay with increasing the numbers. Uh, this means that there's an extra burden on the fiscals. Uh, but you are also okay in terms of appointment of judges and giving all that power, consolidating it to one individual. Blessed, let's, let's point out the fact about what we have before us. This bill has not been passed. This bill this is, is what has passed. Be, no, this we, bill is yet to go we, to we, we, this we, bill is yet to go to Senate and we, it can be blocked in Senate. No, no, no. You, do you know that? We are giving us false equivalence in this. Do you know the, how the system of parliament in Zimbabwe works? If Senate says no, Parliament can choose to send it direct to the president. There's no lower house and upper house in our system. Are you, are you aware of that? So are you, are you saying uh, uh, Senate is a formality then? Of course, didn't it you is, know that? It, 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 it's going to debate that and it can block 
the the, Do the you bill. Know, like I'm saying, that the House of Assembly, even if Senate blocks, the House of Assembly can choose to send this bill direct to the president. But Do that, you, are but you aware of that. But that is not the way that uh, no, this is. I'm asking you this question. Of, of course, I am aware, but that is not something that you you so you, you want know. to say is the operational mechanism of Parliament because. Uh, there is no intention. There's never been an intention to bypass Senate. That is why. That is why it is there. That really is why it debates issues. That is why technically it can block this bill. Do you think you have the numbers to block the bill in Senate? For for us to block the the, the, the bill in Senate, we don't need to to have numbers. We just have to have enough numbers to block the bill, and we have them. Yes, sure. How yes. many numbers do you have? It's, the, the it's not even it's not even about numbers in our party. Bless it. Mm. Yeah. People can be convinced across the aisle. People they can failed to convince them that the last amendment that your president actually voted yes to. He actually voted yes. Yes, to. but this one is not is not gone through. So we cannot preempt that you are going to fail yet again. Are you sitting here right now? Are you telling me that you are going to stop the bill if the clause that you talk about is contentious? What I am saying to you right now yes. is that the bill in its current format does not meet our expectations so and our through, and our position as a party so if it and we through, still have a lot to put through to that bill so that should it go through it has got it captures a lot of what we believe should be in that bill so my question therefore is if it doesn't are you telling the people right now who are looking at you that you're going to block it because you have the numbers you said so yourself Yes, as yes. it is right now, yeah. the intention is to stop it going through in the format that it is, in the current manner that it is. The intention as we stand right now is that we are not going to allow this bill to go through because we still want it to be changed. We still want it to what meet... specifically are you going to change? Obviously, we don't want the... the so, so that I can hold you account. If this bill goes through the things that you say you will change, then you'll have life. <laughs> No, I would not have lied, blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm only telling you the party position and I'm only telling you what, we are, what our prayer is. Our prayer is that the, the running mate clause will not fall away. Because we feel that it has not been tested in a constitution. Of course, we understand that uh, the very fact that it was uh, you know, hold, held in abeyance from 2013, it means that there were... They were certain quarters of our society perhaps which did not which were not happy with it we take that into cognizance but we feel that it should have been given an opportunity to have been tested uh, practically so that we see that uh, the wishes of the zimbabwean people are carried through in respect witness, to that clause witness we, respectfully, respectfully you say that you have the numbers to stop no but you you asked me a question before i finish asking the, uh, answering you you want us to move on to the next question the second question that you you asked is about uh, uh, the, 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 the issue with the magistrates, where, uh, with the, so sorry, with the Chief Justice, whether the, the President must have sole authority to appoint without interviews and even to appoint people that are past retirement age. That is not the position of the party. That is what we are going to be arguing in the Senate about. And we are going to use every political leverage we have against the ruling party to make sure that that bill does not see the light of day. Because we believe that a Chief Justice should not be... Are you changing your position? Because you said you have the numbers to stop it. You said that. Just, just a few we, have, we have got the numbers. And uh, if you want me to tell you how the numbers, uh, we got the numbers. So, so if it doesn't change, you're going to stop it. That's, I, let's, let us just not go round and round. If it doesn't change from the state it is right now, you're going to stop it. If this bill goes... This bill is headed for Senate, mm -hmm. and the party position as it heads to Senate is that we are going to have it changed. If it doesn't change, You're we going are going it. to stop it. Yes. You guarantee that. Yes. People of Zimbabwe, we will keep track of this. And the MDCT say, if the bill does not change, they will stop it and it will not pass through Senate. Now, I just want us to take note of this. The bill, the process and we will watch the process with you. Now, let us, let us go to when there was a statement that, that was quoted by Zim, Zim Lai, but uh, Senator Pugin has come out to say that that statement is not necessarily correct. Uh, we, 
your vice president voted no to a bill that you say conflicted your members because it supported women in power. But your vice president is a woman and was voting no with clarity that she did not want this bill to go through. Your youth chairperson was voting yes because it empowered the youth and promoted women. Do you think investing a lot of executive authority in one individual is more better, is, is a lesser evil, and that it is outweighed by giving women proportional representation? Well, uh, first, first and foremost, I don't see the connection between the background that we have given to your question and the question itself. Uh, but uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a standard uh, a, you know, position in our part, we, believes in check, we believe in checks and balances. We have never believed in any individual having uh, any power that can usurp any, any singular authority. Uh, from the beginning of the party, from the, when the party was formed, we have always believed in checks and balances. This dates way back into even the days of ZCTU. You will not have a single organ that cannot be checked by another. Even in the party right now, you'll find, voted, that, you'll, voted, you'll find that you'll find that you'll find that the president of the party voted, has no has no power the over 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 the, the the standing committee. That is by deliberate design. The president of the party has no power over the national, the national council. Voted, that is witness, that is witness. What you're saying is totally in opposite with, with what you just did. You voted to remove the checks and balance. Your MPs. But voted. even your own even your own background to the issues at hand. Uh, have paid allegiance to the fact that this was a very, very omnibus kind of a, of a, of a bill that had two uh, ends to it, which were bungled into one. So the process of unbungling it is still ongoing. This is why we are going to, this is why we are going to go and debate about it in the Senate, and this is why at this position you have made me vow right here. But we are still accusing the party of having taken a position altogether. But you have still, but you still made me. I want you to justify the part that you say. Uh, I cannot. Over, I cannot justify. Over, over I cannot women. justify anything in, in when the when this is work in progress. This is work in progress. Yes. You said the confliction was coming from women in power, but the women in your party do not want that empowerment. So who are you? Who are you supporting? Because Dr. It is not. It is not true that women. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Togozani Kupe was not voting uh, for, for all the women. The Secretary in... General is a woman, she voted no. Be because the issue is, they were not voting for all the women. They were voting on other issues that they felt strongly about. The categorizations... Well, the parliamentarian votes, votes for other people. The, the ca but if you, are, if, if, you are, if you are going to have this interview, blessed, you'll have to give me time to answer. If you are going to throw in a barrage of questions before I finish, you are on to the next question. It, it, it will not even have value for, for, for your listeners, you see. So, they were, like I, I said to you, there were six thematic areas in that bill. It was, a, it was a composite bill. It was an omnibus bill. It had four good positions for the party. You know, it had four babies for the party. Some felt if we throw away this uh, bill, we are throwing uh, four babies away in, in order to keep two. Some felt strongly that the two that we should actually keep uh, are the, the make or do about the whole bill. This is what happened and this is work in progress. It is going to go to Senate and we have made me vow here and our members, our senators are going to debate to make sure that this bill does not come out and get in, and, and be signed into law in its present format. This is what, what is there. Let's look at... Um I spoke to Senator uh, Pugin uh, just a few days ago and he said that he has been receiving death threats from members of the party because of statements that had been allegedly uh, said to him. And he also made a, uh, put a tweet that the things that people are saying are paving way for an illegal recall on him. He's your deputy. Yes. Are you aware of these problems that he's facing? 
I am, an, I'm not aware of the fact that uh, Senator Pukeni uh, got any death threats from anyone. And if that is the case, it will be very uh, regrettable because no one must be threatened for whatever view they have. In fact, as a party, we will defend Senator Pukeni against those uh, kind of persons, be they within the party or outside, because we believe as a party that every person is entitled to their opinion. There is freedom of speech before they add their opinion, and they should be granted freedom after they've added their opinion. So I'm not aware of that, and um, I will not actually take your, your word for it, because if that were really true, Senator Pukeni would know the party channels. We've got a security department, various security departments, and uh, the leadership that can look into that issue seriously and advise, advise accordingly, because he is a... Uh, uh, you know, I see a very senior member of the party, deputy national spokesperson of the party. So if that were true, if you were telling the truth about that, uh, ki those kind of security threats uh, to his life, uh, we, would, uh, we, would, we would know, uh, you know, through the proper channels. And uh, the issue about uh, being recalled, uh, really, it, 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 it doesn't arise, not just for him, but for, for, for all the generality of the public representatives that we have right now. The issue is, the, I will not trivialize the issue to, to Pukin alone, because the issues about recalls have never been about persons. When a member is called, it is the, when, when a member is recalled, it's not necessarily the person that is being recalled, but it's a certain conduct or idea that is working against the interest of the party that the party will be managing. So, um, any member of the party who is a public servant, a public representative of the party, is subjected to equal uh, you know, standards uh, that are deemed by the party to be furthering the interests of the party uh, if they are still within the party, or in the case where they've left the party, it becomes automatic that they are no longer serving the interests of the party. So uh, let's not trivialize this issue. Let's look at how we actually arrive at, at, at recalling people. It's always about the interests of the party I, I, and, due, and the two organs of the party raise those issues yeah. and they are given but, attention but, but, but and me. decisions are made. This is not, a, a recall cannot happen from the street in the MTCT. It has never happened. It, it will not but happen. Can you answer a specific question because I'm talking about a specific person who has put this tweet in the public domain that there is an attempt to do an illegal recall yeah, but we the party cannot be, the party cannot be held at ransom by people's uh, personal views. I'm giving you the position of the party. A part, the party has never reached at recalls because uh, of personal reasons. There are two organs that have to sit before any member is recalled. I, I understand. That so the, the fact that somebody is afraid may be afraid of their shadow or. They have he's, got, got, he's got reason to be afraid. Your last standing committee, there was an attempt to suspend him. But, I know that for a fact. But, but that, uh, that knowledge is unknown to us. We, we never, in our last standing committee, there was never an attempt to, to recall him or to suspend him. I, this is news to me. I'm, I'm only hearing it f from you for the first time. And uh, we have not remember. heard that from any organ. You remember the so, last time so I, said I don't think we are going to. You remember the last time I, I said don't think we are going to be fair to this party. If we are going to take every, you know, every you know issue from every rumor mill. The, the last time I said with you, I told you that you were going to be appointed the party spokesperson, and you refused, sitting next to me like that. <laughs> and the next Wednesday you were appointed. Yeah, but uh, you, you see. Understand? So, so when I s ask you things, I have information. Yeah, but, but, but it was a fortuitous uh, guess then on your part. Mm -hmm. uh, you are sometimes fortunate. You may not be fortunate with this one uh, because it is not true. No organ of the party has spoken about recalling anyone, any member at all, let alone uh, uh, Senator Kalipani Pukin. We will be playing the, the video that we had uh, an interview with him because it was an interview. He also asked him to comment on, on the position of the party. And he said he couldn't comment on the position of the party because he had to be cleared by a chain of people. But this is your deputy spokesperson. Can you explain to us something like that? Well, we, we had a situation uh, that we have since rectified uh, regarding his position as spokesperson of uh, the vice president, Madam Kope. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that it was a natural situation that we had him speak 
uh, as the spokesperson of, of Madam Kope. This was a consequence of uh, events that followed the Extraordinary Congress, which are public. You will know that there were emotive outbursts after the Extraordinary Congress, after the Extraordinary Congress, and you know that there was an attempt even to, to paint a picture that, um, you know, uh, the newly elected president had been uh, first that the election, the extraordinary congress had been stopped, and secondly, that uh, you know the newly elected president uh, was going to be fired or had been fired. Uh, but all those things did not happen, and they have not happened. And as of now, no one has actually mounted any legal challenge to the legitimacy of the president uh, of the MTCT simply because there is no evidence, there is no reason for them to do so. And uh, with the passage of time, leadership has since realized that. And uh, in, the, in the following days, you will see uh, uh, Senator Kalipani Pukeni drop that, uh, 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 you know, that title of being spokesperson to, to the vice president. Because in our party, that position belongs to only one person who is uh, uh, Lloyd Damba. He speaks for the president, he speaks for the vice president, he speaks for the chairperson, he speaks for the whole presidium of the party. So the conflict uh, within himself then was uh, representing a person whom he thought should uh, uh, was continuing as acting president and the, the issues in the party when he was not uh, even attending some of the meetings. When was this resolved? Well, we had a, a standing committee meeting on a workshop on Friday and Saturday, and everyone, and may, you may want to know that each and every one member of our MTCT uh, standing committee was present, and this was uh, ironed out, and uh, this is the position as I speak today. Uh, Madam Vice President Kupe was there, the second Vice President uh, Muzuri was there, uh, Deputy Treasurer General Chief Unlov was there, uh, uh, and uh, Senator Pukeni, Deputy Information and Publicity Secretary, was there. And these issues were raised and they were put to rest. So this is now all water under the bridge, and this puts paid to earlier, uh, you know, assurances from our president that uh, he is a unifier, that he believes in rational disputation, that we will have dialogue within the party and this party is going to mobilize as one force going forward. We have since done that and uh, even the challenge is about the appointment of the information and publicity secretary, the, the treasurer general and, and, and every other that they had queried coming out of the extraordinary congress were put to rest in that, uh, in that meeting. Let, let me move to the six million uh, dollars that you allegedly vanished in, in, from your account. It has been making a lot of news over the past few weeks. Does that worry you? Well, it, it worries me um, from the point of disinformation of the public that uh, here uh, is a person who, as a member of this party, and uh, you know a brilliant composer of, of song, a, a praise singer in the part, who then for some reason decides, uh, you know, to 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 go on top of a mountain and start uh, making wild allegations about issues that he totally has no knowledge about, and for some strange reason, we had. Uh, why, why do you say he's got no knowledge about it? Because your your then acting president, Dr. Tokozani Kupe, is on public record saying six million was stolen from the party. Your, your chairperson of the party, uh, Morgan Committee, is on record, public record, of saying six million was stolen from the party. Your then treasurer general, uh, Chief Ndo, is on public record of saying that money was stolen. I, I don't remember uh, any one of them saying money was stolen and uh, them having a thief to point at to say the money was stolen. They had questions about uh, how it was spent going to the Extraordinary Congress. And we do you have videos and of that, Mr. Witness, do we? especially coming from Madame Chokozani Kupi, who said money was stolen? Did she tell you who the thief was? Yes. She said the Secretary General, that's the reason, one of the reasons why she said she was suspending him from the party. Well, like I, I said, we've heard this many times. Uh, we as a part would want uh, the media and uh, the public to disabuse itself from emotive outbursts that happened on the night of, 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 of the Congress. Because we ourselves, as participants in that uh, Congress, 
you know, they understand the, the mood that prevailed at the hour of the moment. You know, this is like, this, no, allow me to go on. This is like a, a match between Highlanders and Dynamos. Uh, two minutes into a game, even if somebody is shoved in an unusual way in a penalty area, surely a commonsensical referee will know that uh, it's part of the adrenaline for the first few minutes of the game, which are going to die down and, and things continue as normal. So we have long forgotten about that. Like I'm, te I'm telling but you. Is, but how, how do you forget something that, that has a police, a police docket and these three people that I've, I've mentioned. Have what what, what I've police. said we have forgotten about. What, what these people I've mentioned have actually gone to the police and made statements which I am aware of. What, what we have forgotten about are those outbursts. However, the fact that they've taken their uh, matters to the police. So it's not an outburst. Uh, but blessed, you have to give me an opportunity to answer them. What, the fact that they've taken those issues to police does not in itself uh, make it, uh, you know, make uh, the person alleged to have taken any money guilty. It's, it's surprising, it's surprising, it's surprising, it's, it's, it's surprising, blessed, that, you know, uh, President Bonzora is the only person who is supposed to, to be suddenly guilty because somebody has made an allegation. Let's not, let's not talk about being guilty here. Because you, 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 sp you speak of allegations, you speak of allegations. You, witness, what I'm challenging from you is that you have since forgotten that these were outbursts. <coughs> but outbursts... We have forgotten the outbursts. People do not go to police. But there are consequences to those outbursts. No, I, the, the going to the police were consequences which are going to be handled again in the fullness of time because they were not founded but what i don't understand is then people saying a hey, senator monzora or president monzora is the only person who if somebody goes to make an allegation against they should certainly be guilty they should uh, certainly no, lose credibility you, but you didn't go there Richards. you're the one who's taking it there i'm simply asking you because i just no but up. the net but the net interpretation of your follow-ups mm -hmm is to say that because Madame Coupe made those allegations, it means that money was stolen. No, 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 no. no. It means that somebody was guilty. When in fact... But, but I, I didn't say that. Yeah, but the, but the way you, 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 you project it, it, you it suggests... Saying, why you are saying Murimoka, right? Why you are singling out Murimoka to say a praise singer in the party? When your party leaders have been saying this, that is my question to you. You are twisting it to mean something else. Murimoka is a praise singer, was a praise but, singer in the party. That is not in question. Yeah. Murimoka was not in the finance department mm -hmm. of the party. That is not in question. This is why I brought to you the people who so, are So department. Murimoka has nothing. Even the people that you are alleging, that uh, they, they, the people that took uh, affidavits to the police, they are not in the party finance and administration committee. The, the chairperson... Chief chairperson uh, uh, committee is one of the persons who took the uh, affidavit. It doesn't sit. Madam Kupe doesn't sit. The chairperson of the Finance and Administration Committee, according to this handbook, is the, is the Secretary General. We have a, a, a further to the Constitution, we have a financial rules, financial rules and operational standards of the party, which has been in operation for years, but this latest version was last updated in 2015. It clearly states who sits in the 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 finance ad. well it's shared by the secretary general if you have, if you have got time i can take you through the no, do, well it's it's used in conjunction with the party and it shows uh, the duties of the secretary general as the as the as the as the as the chairperson of the finance and administration committee mm -hmm. the party constitution is the one that clearly uh, uh, enunciates or outlines who sits in the in the finance and administration committee and i can tell you for a fact mm -hmm. and i can tell you for a fact the national chairperson does not sit in the finance and administration committee the vice president so, does so not yeah, sit in on the this, on this section of this handbook that you have just handed to me says the secretary general will authorize the transaction and approve payment and pass to the treasurer general for the payment yes. now the treasurer general say he doesn't pay he didn't pay so who pay? It further enunciates that the person who actually does the physical paying is not the, the treasurer general authorizes the payment, but the person who handles physically handles any monies or any receipts is not even the treasurer general. No, but that's what it, it says here. No, it says, that's why I say it. To the treasurer general for payment, it says pass on to the treasurer general for payment. This is your book, not mine. 
So how that's you, that's why I say that's why I say that's why I say uh, blessed. That is why I'm telling you that it's used in conjunction with the constitution. The constitution then goes on further to explain. So so it's in conflict. It's not in conflict. Okay. It's it explains the procedures as laid in the constitution. So it, it the constitution clearly then says the person who handles money at any material time is the finance director. So in the issue, this goes to the heart of the issues that have been raised about the six million. There was never a single second when Secretary General Monzora then had any money in his hands. Which is why the whole accusation to him as to having been the person who, who had anything to do... A go witness, you said the person who handles money is the Secretary General. I didn't. Unless it was a slip of the tongue. I didn't say the Secretary General handles money. I said the Secretary General chairs the Finance and Administration Committee, which decides on expenditure. Uh, it had decided uh, on the expenditure that was supposed to be done uh, at the about around the extraordinary congress. It had made all the budget allocations. It is the one which employs party employees. It is one that directs expenditure. And when that has been done, when the finance uh, and administration committee has done that, as directed, as led by the chairperson, who is the secretary general, and 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 and, and he releases funds. And, and, and authorizes for that expenditure. The Treasurer General then releases the funds mm. to the executor of the actual budget, who is the finance mm. no, director that's, that's in the that's, party, that's, that's, a technical person, an employee, that's, not a politician. That's, that's, Our monies are never at any material lies, time held by a politician. the problem or witness. The Treasurer General didn't release the money. He did release the money. He says he didn't. He, he has written letters saying he didn't release the money. You, then you, you, must have, you must have missed the, the, the interpretation of his letters. In his letters, he say he denied having held any money, which is true. He never held any money in his, in his hands, which is very true. No, he he denied having been in possession of any money because he was asked to pay. You see, the problem that arose... Okay, maybe you need this light about what really caused all this. The problem that arose during the Extraordinary Congress was that after the treasurer general uh, had released the money and he was in South Africa, the money got into the physical possession of the finance director, so his who is under him. his, yes, his who is under order. his authority. Who is you're stating the fact that uh, the, secretary, the treasurer general signed, yeah, yes. signed the bank requisition yes. to say money should be yes. paid, who is but that's making payments, so he did make a payment. But then, the, you see, we're dealing with uh, physical payments here, money to be released, and, and so, the person who so actually took treasurer, out the instructions. So you're saying your treasurer general does not, uh, does not know the difference between holding physical money... He knows, but the so interpretation... You know, he, he the interpretation. No, the interpretation that has been given... But remember, we were going to a Congress, and uh, we had people that were agitated about their transport arrangements, their, uh, you know, all their upkeep being taken care of. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was being asked to answer to, 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 to the questions coming from the provinces and everywhere. And uh, his response was to the effect that he did not have any physical money in himself and on himself, it which was, was true. It was about physical money. Yes, it was true. The money was not with him. It was with the financial can director can of the can party. Can Let me finish this part. But that person reports to the Treasurer General. Mm -hmm. So the inquiries to the tre tre Treasurer General were correct because he is the person who is supposed to be giving instructions to the finance director as to who he should now give money, what he should now pay at any material time. But the Treasurer General at any material time or any politician in the MTCT at any material time, they will never have a single dime of the party in their pockets. Except but what is Zimbabwe, due to them. In, Z in Zimbabwe, no one has, has physical care unless you are getting something different. No, but we, we made a withdrawal and we needed to pay our service providers. Some so of them were paid so in hard cash. So you're given hard cash? The, the, some monies were withdrawn and they were, given, uh, were, were, were paid in hard cash, yes. <coughs> to the tune of six million, how much was given in hard cash? Well, I may not disclose to you exactly how much was paid in hard cash because I'm not the finance director. Uh, but what I can tell you that the drawdown about the six million has been enunciated, enunciated clarified. It's very clear. Provinces were given money. Uh, you remember when you talk about the issue of the Zubko passes, the Zubko passes did not go to the actual remote play areas where people were. The Zubko passes were on, only on the main highway corridors. For instance, the Zubko pass that was speaking people in Gweru, in, in the Midlands, 
even people from Karipa would have been in Kweru. So there had to be uh, other arrangements, financial arrangements, to transport people from Karipa, from Gokwe, from Pinga even. So, so, so you, there were other arrangements so that had to be vice, done. So your vice president didn't know about this? Your chairman didn't know about it? Your treasurer general didn't know about it? Only the secretary general? I, t I, told, you, I told you that the money was with the director and the questions were directed to the to the treasurer as the person in charge of the but finance no, director. Who, who had directed these questions to I think it was a statement that he just produced, is it? No, he produced a statement after people started making inquiries to him. And these people were the ones who were benefiting from the money and they were making inquiries to him? No, bless it. There, 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 there was some logistical challenges and people were asking the treasurer as to uh, where the money was. Uh, how they could, uh, how the organization could move forward with the preparations, and he was in South Africa. There so, was, was because he was the one who was being, uh, who was the, uh, who was the focus of those questions, he had to clear himself. That because people don't know, like I think from 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 my reading, from your from our engagement, you also didn't know that the treasurer really doesn't, uh, you know, carry lots of money in his in his pocket. I, I, I didn't know anyone in Zimbabwe carries lots of money because I'm. I'm no, but I'm I'm, I'm I'm saying I'm, as a I'm procedure. Under, as a I'm procedural under, matter, as a procedural matter, even the minister I'm, of I'm even the minister the of finance. I'm, uh, I'm under the impression that people sign RTGSs and uh, plastic money and stuff like that. So I, I was, I didn't know that people were getting. Money. Yeah, but if 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 that is your level of, uh, if if that is the level that you are going to reduce this question to, then uh, what are the hard notes for? So no one carries the money. So why, why does the Reserve Bank keep printing uh, hard notes? The fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is, even the, the, the Minister of Finance, mm -hmm. you will not go to his office and find uh, loads of, of cash million, lying around but somewhere. But the six million that we are talking about, your secretary, your, your treasurer general, your former treasurer general, uh, who, who was driven around by Murimo Gawu's uh, employee of your part, of your party, says that part of that money went to Bell Petroleum is an RTGS. It also went to another lady who is uh, allegedly to be aware. Since in a statement that I've seen, she put before the police that you transferred, the party transferred money to her to buy foreign currency. But blessed, uh, this is a political party. Uh, it operates. Did you buy foreign currency? It, 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 l l let me answer this question the way I want to answer it so that uh, you can choose to be satisfied with my answer or not. But this is a political party. We cannot go to every uh, Jack, Tom, and, and, and Harry and say, look, you are dealing with the MTC now. This is the service that we want from you. Obviously, people, some will begin to support HRs, some will begin to inflate prices, some will begin to, you know, have all kinds of interest about what exactly we are do, doing with our, our transactions. So, this is why we have security, a security department. We will sometimes do things through our own channels in a way that manages uh, the results that we want to come out of it. We will not, uh, sometimes we will hold meetings at a lodge, uh, or uh, any other place under different names because we don't want any other interests to come into conflict with ours. So the fact of the matter is all the money that was used towards Congress was accounted for and as of today but you if did transfer money to this individual I will not in, tell you the in, parts that in, we use in uh, if I have told you that we are a political party with interest to protect so you, you, will know, you, will, you will know you will you will Listen, you will so know that as a political party, so we will do system? everything in our interests. No, no, I understand what you're saying, but I'm asking is this... By the way, the by the way, this, uh, what you want to say, mm. uh, that we transferred money to the black market without agreeing to it anyway, I will just shed light on it. It's in net effect to try and say we did money laundering. This is the explanation that has been given to people that perhaps if we did that by so doing, we were doing money laundering. That is a very incorrect interpretation of the law. Money laundering is not uh, that. That is not the, the interpretation of like money laundering. Man, no, you, I, you, I am you, answering you, the question. I'm not going to answer the question the way you want it. I've given no, you... The question is simple. It's open-ended. Did you buy foreign currency from the black? I am not going to give you a yes or no on that question. I have given you the fact that we are a political party. We act in the best interests of our organization. And, and, I've you, and I've told you, and I've told you real, and I've told you real, and uh, you know, issues of substance, why we act in that manner. People will inflate prices against us.
people will begin to support us if they knew they were dealing with us. People will begin to have interests in our dealings and two interests which can actually compromise so, the outcomes yeah, that then, we want. So, so we are system. not we are not yes. going to lay bare. No, witness. This is why I was asking the question: Is this this covert operations that you're talking about? I didn't. Is, I, is I this, didn't say. This, I didn't say we work through center. COVID. Are, are, are this therefore not the center of the, of the misunderstandings that you have? Because maybe people don't understand okay. this COVID. You didn't make me explain the, you didn't allow me to explain about this uh, money laundering thing. No. There was no dirty money. The money that we were talking about, about uh, but I'll answer it because, 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 because it's in I the... Know, I know the definition of money laundering. Okay, but for the benefit of the viewer who has been told that uh, because uh, we did that we money laundering, the money is not dirty. When you launder money, it's, a, it's from a dirty source. You are selling drugs, but then you bank that money through your butchery business so that when you withdraw it, people think it's coming from a butchery when, it's, when in fact it's coming from drugs. So the money that we are talking about is money specifically this time because we, we, we had no any other fundraising activity whatsoever. It's money from the government grant, granted to Political Finances and Act above board and we used that money uh, transparently as an organization uh, to transparent, one another. Transparent would mean that you would go and buy the MDC. You just said you didn't do that. I didn't say we didn't do that. I didn't so, say. So I didn't say. I didn't say we didn't do that. I didn't say that I did what you want me to say. I did. I just explained to you that, mm. as a political part, we do everything that is necessary to protect our interests and to make sure that our outcomes meet our objectives, that we are not sabotaged, that we don't have people raising prices on us, that we don't have people, uh, you know, having their interests interfere with our business. This is this is so exactly you, how we operate. Would you would you be happy to if government was going to say we went and we had a transaction um, through through another name uh, and, and, and we didn't use a government accounts because we didn't want people raising money on us, would that make sense to you? Blessed. There have been issues where government has been taken advantage of, but unfortunately because it is government, it has got no any other way except to do that. But the government in waiting. Yeah, but we are not the government. We are a government in so waiting. You are, you are allowed to, to do COVID operations? We are, not allowed. We, are, we are not allowed to do anything that is illegal. But we are not disallowed from being wise in our, and, 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 and dutiful in our, in our uh, you know, uh, exercise of uh, but expenditure of finances. In your, in your wisdom, you have created confusion within your own party. Or, or rather, opportunities... There, there is no confusion, really. Of, there is no confusion except that which is created as a narrative but, to, but does, to how, dent how, how, how this you, part. How do you deny this witness? Your vice president has lodged it in affidavit with the police confirming that money was stolen. Your chairperson has done that. Your, 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 your other vice president, Zuri, has also done that. Murimo Oga right now is doing that. Your former uh, treasurer general is doing that. How do you then say it's not confusion witness? The same vice president you are talking about also wrote a letter moments before the Congress. Moments. It was less than 24 hours before the Congress. A written letter to the police to say we are missing none of our funds. Everything is in order. And that is the position in the party. And in fact, for you to see that is the position in our party, uh, if, if, if any uh, allegation has been raised and there is evidence, surely... Uh, Some the, people say you are not being arrested because you are aiding and abating ZANU-PF. This is why you are voting. Uh, yeah, but this is the reason. This, 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 this is this is the strange uh, reasoning uh, that we will not agree to. Yeah. That uh, because. But if you had those accusations. Yes, I have. I, I have, but they are not true, and we will not ag uh, even agree to, to the kind of. The people that is not because true. because look, no, the the party is very clear. It's I told the you the, party, the party. The party is, is clear about the. Party? Because the, you, you have supporters or not. But you'll have to give me a chance to respond to your questions, Blessed. Yes. The I, party is clear. The drawdown of the six million is clear. It's transparent. I I'm saying convince the people. This is why I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to guide you to the question that I'm asking. You are answering your own. It's not about the party. It's about the people. It's about the taxpayers. Convince them. The, taxpayer, the, the, the taxpayers must know ah. that an allegation was made uh, by one uh, uh, person, Morimoka who is a praise singer in the party, who is not in the finance department of the party, who at, at the moment is not an employee, uh, an employee of the party. And in my, in my knowledge, he was never an employee of the party. But uh, 
uh, maybe I, I may have, you, you I may have missed something, but in my knowledge, it should be forty-eight thousand dollars that you. No, but in my knowledge, according to my knowledge, I never knew Murumoka as a as, a, as an employee of the party. Uh, I know he used to hang around uh, or the, the the treasurer general, and the treasurer general, if you were to ask him, he will have a very clear. Um, you know, explanation as to who Murumoka was. He did explain that even in our meeting last time. Totally disowning him as a as an employee. Totally disowning him as a as a as a as a as a, as a person whom he fought, he ever forwarded any information to. So the treasurer, the deputy treasurer general now, uh, Chief Unjov, is very clear that he never forwarded any information to Murumok. And the vice president never forwarded any information to Murumok. And none of our, of our leadership ever forwarded any so, information so to Murumok. Where did he get this information? This, Which this, apparently is true to some extent. But you don't know where you got inform the information from, but you want to allege that it is true. And we are telling you as a party, no, but you none just, of our fans just, are missing. You, you, just, you just danced around the questions that I asked you. You, know? you may have just known that it was uh, 6 million from somewhere. But he doesn't know the full draw, draw, drawdown of that. How do, you, do, how do you get to know that you're not an employee of the party, you're not a party member, you're not in the standing I'm not in the finance and that mini committee, everyone else is not. But people know that there was six million that was budgeted. Because of Murimoga, because of Dr. Cooper, because of who? Not, Chief, nece not necessarily. Even people that have never heard about those two, those people would know that there was money. Because look, we are a political party, our business is not covert. We discuss uh, issues. You know, so but the drawdown and how the expenditure of that money went down, he has no knowledge. Right. Now let's um, let us let us uh, in 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 wrapping up um, the issues around your party aiding in the, uh, in being in the pocket of Zambia. Does that make sense to you? It totally doesn't make sense uh, to our party. Uh, because, um, but we'll understand why people will, uh, you know, uh, not misunderstand us. Uh, initially, or in the in the formative stages of the party, the opposition used to be confrontational, uh, overly confrontational sometimes. down with ZANU-PF and uh, agreeing to a government of national unity. 
So I think, I think as, as, if, as, if the, as if you won it, then you said, no, let us drop. This is what you are you're making it up. He won, he was denied the victory. Uh, yes, you, you would have to agree that you know there, there are decisions that are that are reached at consequence to a certain uh, happenings, events in history. Yes. You have nothing I cannot I cannot I cannot deny that in the history. I cannot deny that there was a background to it, there was a history to it. 2008, uh, the run of elections, massive uh, human rights abuses were, were done. Uh, matters, so, even. Yeah, this is but, why but, I raised this but, but, but there it are is. other situ there are other situations which have been worse than that. We where just, the leaders have, cho have chosen to go on with the, with the kind of positions that they have. Yeah, For instance, if you go to the history you know, of countries like uh, uh, Japan, you find that Japan uh, is the first year uh, you know, the first year bomb which killed over 80,000 people, but the leadership did not concede defeat as, 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 as the Americans would have wanted until a second bomb was dropped. You see, so but President Tsongirai realized that it is better to have rational uh, yeah. disputation with Zanu PF, sit down with the nation. This is my interject, witness, uh, is that I, f I f find it as if you are making false equivalents here. More can change life than you want in the nation. Yes. As you said, as yes. you put it. Yes. And as we have known, but they said they had not won with the required percentage. Right? Mm -hmm. People were killed. People were abducted. People like Justin and Coco were going to be communicating for a long time. He had something way more the responsibility to save the people in the South. What is your responsibility? Our responsibility is that the people of Zimbabwe live and they've got lives beyond the elections. There are issues that we have to engage some PF1 on a running uh, time and basis. We cannot uh, get into an election. After an election, there is a result. Then we get back and get stuck into the election mode to say, as long as the result is not what we wanted, we are not going to put our, 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 our shoulders. How, how does that affect the value of the government, the opposition? It does affect. Right now, when we began this interview, we were talking about a bill which was supposed to be, which is supposed, still supposed to be given due attention by the opposition. Surely we cannot do that. Uh, of course, you can't do any of You called 48 of your own members from Parliament. No, but they said you are criminalizing the recall clause as if it didn't come from the constitution of Zimbabwe. This is a clause that exists because no, of the constitution. No, but you can't have rational disputation between your own party. This is my point. You recall. And, and you want to have who rational disputation. Who is the point? You want to have who rational disputation. The person who leaves the part, if all the people that you called are people who left the MDCT up in on your on your on your on your studio on your platform to explain who was the court. And I don't think you, you want me to go over again. No, no, no. The person who you to court to are people that left the MDCT. Well, or are people who said. took positions that are detrimental to the MTC okay. T as an institution. Okay. When, which when, when your president was giving a press press conference, yes. he noted in his in his delivery that there are people who belong to Nelson Chamisa when Pala. But he's not recorded. No, that you should he said that. I didn't, he did say that, but yeah. he didn't put the proper context that uh, You always don't give context on something that is so straightforward. He said there was that, the, the context that he meant was he disowned certain members of parliament who are supposed to be MDCG because it suits you. The context, mm -hmm. the context that he, he said those people are, are Chamisa is according to the public narrative. But the net effect of the, of the truth that exists in parliament is that there is only one opposition in parliament and that is the MDC. Uh, so why would the whole leader, why would the whole leader say that the he was addressing the narrative that was being peddled that uh, Nelson Chamisa But he was admitting and admitting to him that there are people who are Nelson Chamisa. You may want to say that, blessed, but uh, so why have you actually called them? We haven't recalled them because they are not uh, detrimental to the interests of the MTCT. I told you last time when I was sitting here that those people, even if they say that if, if they say they are MTC alliance, they are correct because MTC Alliance is a project of the MTCT. By the way, go and ask each and every one of those people that say they are MTC Alliance. Ask them if there was ever a CV a primary election that was done by MTC Alliance. All primary elections were done by MTCT. And then there were those that were 
No, not all, of course. But for the, for the portions that of, 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 of seats that belong to the MPCT, PDP they did their own primary elections, and other parties did their own primary elections. Which, and they then what? Which primary elections did you participate in? Because you're a candidate. My last message to you, oh, no, no, <laughs> my, 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 last, my last message to you, we have seen Pati Ugalia, um, that is already campaigning for the 2023 from the MTSAT. Yes. Is that Ugalia campaigning for 2023? I would suppose it is. Yeah. But you do have a congress that is supposed to come from 2023. Yes. And you have already put a presidential candidate ahead of 2023. We have not put a presidential candidate ahead of 2023. Did you say that you really support it was for Well, I didn't know where your question was leading to. Okay, I can tell you for a fact right now that as the information and publicity sector, we have not produced a single uh, a piece of paraphernalia. Uh, I'm getting tongue tied. We have not produced a single thing. As to no, you're denying it because it's really you know, no, no, I know we, I, I've seen uh, some what you call those uh, records for women. I know we produce you say that in some you change that agenda, it's a you change that yes. agenda, yes, eh? you change that agenda yes. in, on his Facebook post. Uh, Mashaka, yes, said the MDCT has printed one million. That's what he said. You change that agenda and you're denying it on national television. Maybe it's something that has been to my attention so far, but uh, as an information and publicity sector, we have not printed anything. So your treasure general is a lie? <laughs> Bless it. That is for you to say. I no, no, it's it's because for, because as the As the information and publicity sector, we have not produced anything for the 2023 maybe, elections. Maybe someone did it COVID. No. You well, see what? When things are done, yeah, probably they jumped the gun and the report has not yet come because we have submitted. Uh, because, because, because I, I we, have sub we, have sub we have submitted issues for production, mm -hmm. and it may be that the one million that he is referring to is not what we have seen on the public area. What he has produced. He has put the pictures. So, so, so. I'm saying it may be. He may have put a picture, but then he's referring to oh, something that is not because he has not reported that to, 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 to the committee. Uh, the standing committee, we are not aware of anything that has been printed so far. And certainly, as the information and publicity sector, I have not seen anything that has been produced by the party so far. But we have submitted an opportunity, an opportunity witness to, to address the nation of Zimbabwe. Uh, in your own words, what do you feel you need to talk to them without my guidance? Well, Zimbabwe, MTCT is a your party in a familiar position where uh, we are having to redo it all over again. You know, we have done this uh, in 2008. We came back from a similar position and we uh, came back to win the elections. Uh, 2018 was not a good electoral year for us. 2018, we came back strongly. So we are in a situation where we have to put our, our hands together once again as the party of choice for the majority of Zimbabweans going to 2023. Uh, let's keep engaging on uh, issues of the day, uh, getting the official um, uh, clarifications and positions of the party, uh, given the, you know, the amount of uh, propaganda that we are having to go against, uh, because uh, from ZANPF and any other uh, force that is opposed to MTCT that has uh, been the party of choice since its formation in 1999. We as a party are motivated uh, to pursue the, uh, our social democratic values as expressed in this season uh, by e rational disputation where we are saying as Zimbabweans we live between elections and so the leadership of the day must be seized with each and every issue that concerns uh, to, the, to the bread and butter issues of us as a country. We are seized with issues to do with the, the education, the jobs, the economy, and uh, human rights, and every other issue. So let's follow our party, let's give it support, let's put our shoulders to the wheel as we rebuild this great movement. Thank you very much, witness, for, for the time that you've given us and for the amazing uh, insights and discussions that we have had. Now, this is a situation right now where we 
bring you the tropical and water species in town. We just had the party spokesperson uh, witness witness uh, Julian, who was uh, talking to us through some of the issues, the contentious issues that are happening in the party, the constitutional amendment bill number two, and what the party stands for. Now here, really the situation right now, we allow all Zimbabweans a voice and we allow everyone to be heard. This is the alternative voice. This is the place to be. I am yours, Dara, Blessed Mishana, and here this the situation right now. Until next time.